Hello, everyone. It is Chelsea Fagan back with another episode of the Financial Confessions. And we have a really thoughtful and fascinating and, in my opinion, exciting topic to discuss with you today with a guest with whom I've collaborated a little bit in the past on YouTube, and I'll talk more about that later. Uh, But first, before we get into our amazing guest, I wanted to talk about our amazing partner with whom we make every episode of the Financial Confessions. So as you guys may know by now, we make every episode of The Financial Confessions in partnership with Intuit, which if you haven't heard of Intuit itself, you have almost definitely heard of some of the amazing products they make. Uh, They're the makers of things like Mint, which is a budgeting app that I have used for going on seven years now and has completely transformed my financial life. Uh, They make QuickBooks, which is a sort of mint for small businesses, which even if you're a freelancer, you are a small business uh, that I have also used for for years now and use every day at TFD. They make Turbo, which gives you a super nuanced and detailed view of all elements of your financial health, including things like your credit score, your debt to income ratio, your verified income, basically all of the various pieces of information you'll need to make really informed decisions and help reach your goals. Plus, it's tax time right around the corner, and they make TurboTax as well. If you are dying to get started on your financial health, I could not recommend Intuit's products more to do it, and you can get started with them at the link in our description or the show notes. So as I mentioned, we have a topic that I find incredibly exciting today with someone that many of you are probably familiar with and on whose channel I have appeared in the past. This is Wheezy Waiter, aka Hello. Craig. Hi there. How are you? Hello. I'm very good. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Thank you for being here. So you are in New York, but you don't live here. No, I don't. I live in uh, outside of Madison, Wisconsin. <laughs> Very cool. And how long have you been there? Because I remember you moved recently. Yeah. Yeah. I've only been there for, I don't know, five months, six months or so. But I I lived in Chicago for 12 years and I lived in Austin for a year. So I, you know, this big, this crazy big city doesn't intimidate me that much. Mm. Why only a year in Austin? (laughs) Uh, Because we had a baby and we wanted to move near grandparents, uh, the baby's grandparents. So that's why we moved to, because I grew up outside of Madison, Wisconsin. So as you mentioned, uh, and as some of you again probably know, you make YouTube videos. Yes. And I've been on two of them now, I think. Yes, you uh, have. Probably soon to be another one. Yes. Um, and you have kind of a unique approach to YouTube, which I find really fascinating and compelling. I love your videos, where you sort of uh, pick one topic per video, and they're often extremely diverse in topic, not necessarily things in which you're a subject matter. Mm-hmm. And you just kind of deep dive into that particular topic. Yep. Is that fair to say? Yeah. And in a lot of your videos, so I did a video about home ownership as well as one about minimalism. And yeah. I think in both videos, it seems to be your way that you very much go into these topics like, I don't really know how I feel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because it's it's absolutely true. That's kind of the kind of person I am. I'm, I'm generally not, I don't have a, it's hard for me to form extreme opinions about things I don't feel like I know a lot about. So, But I feel like that's an increasing rarity on the internet. <laughs> People who are yeah. very sort of like, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this thing yet. Yeah, and that's I, I don't I don't. It's not like a conscious decision that I'm going to go into this with with no opinion. That's just who I am. Like I'm mm. just someone who doesn't have extreme opinions about stuff. I don't know, and that's why. And learning, I do I do form those opinions eventually. But right. Like for instance, home buying. I I had I have new opinions about that after Tell that me. video. <laughs> well, what are they? Uh, I think I used to think that it was more obviously a good investment. Mm. Like. This is this is what you sh- quote unquote should do if you have the means to buy a home because your your money is going to be most protected that way, uh, aside from like a housing crash or something, right. um, which we fully recovered from anyway. Well, I mean, broadly speaking, but um, actually, I I think it's probably it's of course a matter of opinion, but it's probably. Uh, you could find just as much benefit or more investing in the stock market and not putting down a giant down payment on a house over the long term. Uh, there's value in having the money liquid so you can spend it at any time rather than mm-hmm. being tied up in property and having to sell a house to get the money. There's lots of other other ways that money can be more valuable to you other than other than being tied up in a house. I think a lot of people go through that same realization. Uh, I think more and more in our generation, um, especially because so many of us don't have the means to buy a house, um, there's been that period of having to kind of relearn it from zero 
in terms of, I think most of us probably grew up being told by our parents that it was unequivocally the right thing to do and that renting was throwing your money away. Yeah. Um, and I think, I mean, there's definitely obviously some truth to that, but I, I think for a lot of people, uh, it does not now feel like the death sentence financially that it used to feel to not own a home by a certain time. And in many cases, like my husband and I, like we very much could buy a home at this point and it's just at this point, not the right decision for us, um, which I think is becoming a choice people are increasingly empowered to make. Yeah. And I, we, we bought a house and I don't regret it, but I really don't think it, it if you're just thinking about finances, it's, it might not be the best option, you know? Yeah. And it's also, I mean, you're in a very different place in your life in a lot of ways. Aside from having a kid, you've also like lived in multiple cities. You work from home. You have a lot of things that are in the favor of being a homeowner and living in the same place for 10 years, which in many ways I think are the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of people don't realize how long you have to commit to a place for it to be a baseline good financial decision. Yeah. I think people say five years, but that's assuming at five yeah. years, it's a good market. Yeah, that you, you really don't know for sure. Yeah. And what about, so the other one I did with you was minimalism. Yeah. Do you feel like your opinion on minimalism has evolved since that video? Um, I mean, I, my, my wife and I had, had dabbled in minimalism years ago. <laughs> Got it. Uh, uh, but so I, I had thought about minimalism for a long time before doing that video. Uh, I think I realized after doing that video that I'm not so all in on minimalism like I was. Mm. Uh, I just don't think about it in my day to day life now. I'm much more. Uh, I'm much more about just if I need something, I'm going to get it, and I don't think about is this minimalism or isn't this minimalism. Now I'm just kind of naturally just doing what I want. I think being quote unquote minimalist or thinking about it for a long time kind of helped me just develop habits naturally. And what I mean. What did minimalism used to look like for you, though? Just getting rid of a lot of old stuff. Getting rid. I had a lot of stuff that I didn't need. I, um, I, I moved. I moved several times, which also helped get rid of stuff. But uh, I got rid of books, CDs. I digitized everything that I felt could be digitized, and then just got rid of stuff. And it was. <laughs> This uh, is a theory. I'm sorry to yeah. cut you. Uh, this is a theory I am now developing in real time as you say this. Is yeah. minimalism secretly a way for men to feel masculine about like spring cleaning, <laughs> which is like <laughs> usually a feminine thing? Like I remember my mom once a year would like go through and like organize yeah. and declutter and get rid of a bunch of old stuff, but we called it spring cleaning. Yeah, I mean, I I don't I don't think it made me feel masculine, but but. Uh, and and it was actually a lot of my wife's encouragement to do a lot of this stuff. Um, but yeah, I think partly I was living in Chicago and I was living in smaller space. So, right. so I needed, I needed the space. Yeah. That's um, always something that like yeah. is kind of shocking to me. Like I've lived in New York now for a long time and lived in a equally big city before that. So like for at least a decade, I've been in cities where you just don't have square footage and mm. it like, it always really shocks me how many things, like even if you watch HGTV, when people talk about like the tiny home phenomenon or like they treat it as some sort of um uh abstract concept or 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 uh goal or lifestyle choice to live in a smaller space and it's like don't you realize that so many people just live in spaces like this and yeah. it's just called living yeah and it, i think the doing the video also helped me realize that the that it's really not a thing for everyone you can't really universally say that you know minimalism is one thing because there are so many different People come from so many different backgrounds and live in so many different places that you can't, you can't, I don't think you can make these specific rules about what minimalism is, you know. Has there ever been a video where you went in with what felt like a more formed opinion on something and came out feeling differently? Um, well, home buying was one of the examples, but uh, I'm trying to think of another one that was like really eye-opening I, hopefully I'm on the road to I'm, I'm doing one right now about universal basic income mm. and I'm I'm hopefully mm -hmm. gonna learn some stuff because I I've only only read a handful of articles and haven't really thought about it that deeply there's a, I think I've already learned a lot mm. um, I'm about to do one about nuclear power which I'm gonna talk to uh, a professor at UW Madison and there, there's a nuclear reactor there he's gonna show me that I don't know. See, I, I have loose opinions about nu nuclear power, but again, not that extreme. So it's 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 going to be rare for me to be so eye open and my eyes to be so opened because I don't have that strong of opinions to begin with. 
I feel like it's, I, I was saying this just before we started filming, but I feel like it's such a rare thing on the internet now to yeah. be so open and comfortable and not having hard opinions on things. And I feel like people feel compelled to generate them almost. And oh, feel, yeah. I think, I don't know if it's like a fear of missing out on the conversation or it's a sense of insecurity, but I feel like people don't feel liberated to be like, I really don't know that much about this thing. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think everyone... Uh, opinions get attention. Ex extreme opinions are what gets attention, what Hot gets takes. clicks. Yeah. And uh, and I just don't, I don't like pretending to care about stuff that I don't, I don't care that strongly about. Yeah. Uh, and it's also hard. I feel like it's also hard when you, I mean, God, I feel like once an episode I've come to some moment that's like Twitter is terrible for society, yeah. but it is such a uniquely bad platform for having any kind of nuanced or intelligent conversation. It is. It's also, I think the importance of it is overblown though, too. I think only the only people who are really talking about Twitter are people who are on Twitter. Yet it's the one I use all the time. It's the one I'm on all the I time. Know. But I don't think it's that important, really. It's always really funny. I don't know if yeah. this is just my Instagram feed as like a pretty basic woman, but like anytime something horrible is happening politically or in the news, my Twitter feed is like, you know, an unbelievable meltdown. And then you go over to Instagram and it's as if there are no politics. Yeah. There is no president. Like nothing is happening. YouTube's kind of the same way. There's hardly yeah. any political stuff on YouTube. Well, I follow a lot of political YouTubers, so that's probably, well, I, I probably have an, an exceptional experience on YouTube, <laughs> yeah. but on Instagram in particular, like election night on Instagram is just like people sharing their favorite cookie recipes. <laughs> we were just talking about, uh, we won't even get into what the thing was because I certainly don't want to derail the conversation with that, but we were talking about a stupid thing that was in the news this morning that everyone was talking about. And Craig was asking my opinion on it. And I was yeah. like, my initial, this is what I felt when I saw it this morning. I was like, I feel like we're not obligated to care about these things. <laughs> That's true. Especially now, yeah. I feel like the news cycle is like things that you, you'll be like, remember last week when like, do you know what I'm saying? Like, it yeah. feels like a week out from things, it's as if they never happened yeah. anymore. Yep. Yeah. there's way too much. But also, maybe they never really happened that much to begin with. It's just, it's just that Twitter made it seem like things were happening that really weren't that important in the long run. And way more than any other platform. I never have yeah. that feeling on any other platform. Like I think mm -hmm. on Twitter, I, I uniquely feel like I'm more confused about a topic after yeah. I spend a couple hours reading about it. Yeah. Um, what do you do to get your news? Like, are you more of like a newspaper guy, an RSS feed? So I, well, one of the videos that my wife and I did was. Um, uh, we had no internet for a month and uh tell me about this <laughs> uh that was um great it was actually great it you didn't was, use any internet well okay there were exceptions there were rules i could i could do i can't remember the exact rule but there was some limited amount of time i could check email because i had to because it's my job mm -hmm. uh and i could upload because i have a patreon that i upload to every day and I wasn't going to just stop doing that for patrons. So mm -hmm. so I could upload, but I could only upload. I couldn't couldn't like download it. And it, and it happened to be like a nude of you and you had no <laughs> way of knowing. <laughs> uh, uh, that didn't happen. But uh, yeah, I, there were certain like limited, limited rules. I could use maps could mm. uh, if we had to get somewhere. Like stuff that was just convenient, but that wasn't going to draw us into something, you know. Right. Um but other than that, no internet, no no Twitter, no social media at all, no no TV either. We 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 cut off. That's not even internet. I know we cut. Well, we, our TV was Netflix was, was okay, so. but like that's a loose definition of internet. Well, yeah, well we it's did like it. the 1800s. Like your wife is like yeah. playing the piano by the fire. <laughs> Basically, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the harpsichord. Uh, the, uh, the house we had, <laughs> we were living in at the time, had a piano in it. So did you guys play? It was out of tune. <laughs> so what did you do? You read books, obviously. Yeah, I did read the newspaper during that time, and I loved it. I thought it was nice. it was such a good experience, and I'm like, why don't I do this all the time? And then when the month was over, I stopped doing it. I, I'm not listening. I'm not reading. I the will newspaper. say, for what it's worth, a yeah. physical paper newspaper is like a particularly inconvenient way to read. Uh, it. I what I loved about it was I was actually reading full articles, deeply thinking about them because I couldn't just like click onto something else. Yeah, and. Uh, I don't know. I just felt like I was more informed about about everything. Damn. Yeah. And what what did you really miss about using the internet? Nothing. <laughs> I don't know. I can't really think of Damn. anything. This is making me feel uh, bad about myself. I went back to it, and I don't know why I went back to it so Wait, quickly, but I'm but... sorry. So you couldn't watch Netflix? Could you watch DVDs or something? We could. We didn't really watch So much. no TV, no movies, no internet. Yeah. We, well, we could. We could watch DVDs if we wanted to, but we didn't, we didn't really watch much. Did you play much. video games? Uh, no, it wasn't that hard. It really wasn't that hard. We, we did puzzles. We, 
uh, read books. I don't know. It, it, did you have a child at this time? Yes, we had a child. Okay, well, listen, yeah. I feel like if I had a kid, it would probably give <laughs> there me were more things, things to do. <laughs> there were things to do, yes. There was a, it, was a lot of, it was a lot of making sure my kid didn't fall down and hit her head. Like, that was that, was that period of time. So, Got it. Well, yeah. listen, good for you. Well, so actually that brings <laughs> yeah. me to what I really wanted to bring you on the show to talk about. Uh, because a lot of your YouTube videos are not you going to other people to learn about a topic. Well, that could be part of it. But it's you mm -hmm. challenging yourself to do something for a certain amount of time. Yes. Usually 30 days. Yeah. Um, and I've seen you do all kinds of things like the internet one, obviously. You did a waking up really early one, I think. Yeah. D you did sugar. Did you do intermittent fasting? Yes. Oh, I really want to talk to you about that one. <laughs> Got a little, hmm. Anyway, uh, so you did a lot of these. And yeah. I, what I noticed about them, so I'm someone who, I do have some issues with cleanse culture that I want to talk to you about because I know we've tweeted about that back and forth a little bit. Yeah. But what I do notice in a lot of them is you have what seems to be like a pretty commendable amount of self-control. Well, thank you. And I'm curious, is that something that you feel like you've cultivated over time? Or talk about your experience with, with willpowering yourself into doing things. Um, I think... I think part of it is kind of just some who I am. I'm I'm a pretty stubborn person in certain ways, mm. stubborn with myself. So uh, I don't like I just don't like to fail. <laughs> so if yeah. I if I say I'm going to do something, I stick to it. Do it. Uh, tying it to a video really helps. Actually, just saying publicly that I'm going to do this. Yeah. And then having a specific time, like knowing when I don't have to keep doing it, like. 30, 30 days from now. It's like a light at the end of the tunnel kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, that helps for sure. If I if I just say broadly, I'm just I'm just gonna not drink anymore or something, then there's no time frame, there's no there's no goal. I feel like I'll I'll cheat more often. Yeah. Um so having the goal, tying it to a video, making it public for me works. It really it really helps. Uh, like, I mean, that's a huge level of accountability that a lot of people don't have access to. Yeah. Like your sugar one has like ten million views. Yes, I didn't know that was going to get that many views, but yeah, that was uh, yeah that one blew up big time, but but I did know that you know thousands of people were going to see it regardless. Yeah, uh, and that that helps for sure. Do you in most of the things that you do like a thirty day break from? Do you go back to the thing after the break? Most things I in some form uh, have improved because of the challenge. Most things like uh, intermittent fasting, I'm still doing that loosely. I'm not, mm. I'm not, uh, not as strict about it. But I, I eat much later in the day than I did before, and I stop eating earlier in the day. Tell um, me about that experience. I'm very <laughs> curious. Intermittent fasting was one of the most, uh, I would say, improve one of the biggest improvements. It caused uh, like I lost um, after a couple months. So after, in the in the initial month, I'm not sure how much weight I lost, but I lost probably like a total of like 15 pounds because of it, which was good for me. Um, and uh, I I felt better. I felt like I, I didn't feel as hungry as often. I felt like I had more energy throughout the day. Um, it may have improved my sleep a little, although I still struggle with sleep. That's a, that's a, that's a thing I'm working on for the future. So, but, um, but I loved it. I thought it was good. Yeah, I yeah. so I um, first did IF, uh, I think probably it was four years ago now, just under four years, mm. um, because I had reached a point in my life where I was like, I'm clearly not living well. Like I mm -hmm. definitely, I had, uh, I was at, a, at my highest ever weight, uh, I think I was like 156 or something, and I was completely sedentary, and I was just eating constantly in a mindless way. Like I mm. never even really felt as though I was enjoying any of my meals, I just was eating because I was kind of bored at my job and, you know, in many cases, like the sun was setting early and it's like time for second dinner. Yeah. Um, but so I did it. Um, and for the first year, I was pretty damn hardcore about it. Like in yeah. the sense that I was very rigorous. Like I pushed, I did it where I pushed the time window out over the course of, you know, over the course of like a month where I would do like 15 minutes a day where I was extending my time window so that it wasn't just like really difficult. Um, but I was also um, counting my calories because I wanted to make sure that I was like, you know, that I knew exactly what I was putting in. And lo and behold, I ended up losing, uh, I think 30 pounds total. Wow. So, which was kind of a lot on that frame. Like I went down to 127. Um, yeah. And now I'm higher than 127, but still lower than I was. Um, and it's been something that I uh, have 
pretty consistently followed for, I guess it's been four years since. Wow. Um, I definitely eat now. Sometimes I'll eat earlier. Sometimes I'll eat later. It's much more just like by feeling now. Yeah, me too. Um, and I typically, when I eat lunch, will keep it a very pretty low calorie, high protein, and then basically eat whatever the hell I want every night. Mm -hmm. Um, but I even find that because, uh, you know, of the, that pattern, I'm not that like ravenously hungry every night. Like I'm not, you know, eating some crazy amount of food just because I can. Um, but so it's really been something that's like totally changed my life. And it's interesting because on Twitter, especially now we're back to how terrible Twitter is. Like <laughs> People will often conflate it with disordered eating, which is, yeah. you know, a really frustrating thing. But I do think that there is for a lot of people, and I, I never engage in that because I'm like, I even though I personally feel defensive about it, I don't feel the need to push back. But I will say that I do think that a lot of, um, and this is kind of where it gets into cleanse culture, which I think can be difficult. Like for a lot of people, the, the, the line between self-control and kind of um, obsession is mm. really, really thin. Yeah. I think there's definitely intermittent fasting it might not be for everybody, and there's definitely a danger. Um but it, I just, for these videos that I do, it's just, this is, this was my experience. This is what worked for me. And this is why I think it worked for me. And that's, that's all I can say. You know, I'm not a doctor, Yeah. but, uh, this is, this, this worked for me, you know? Yeah. And I find, because I, I totally understand, even if it's not my case, I do understand how for a lot of people, no matter what the thing is, that idea of having like a pretty, um, a pretty uh, active and consistent level of control over your body specifically, like the choices you're making with your body, whether that's when you're eating or what you're eating or, you know, how you're moving your body around. I understand how for a lot of people that level of control can be a very slippery slope into, um, you know, having unhealthy goals with it. Mm -hmm. um, and I do think for a lot of people, the, the for me, the reason that I've always had a difficult time with quote unquote cleanse culture where you do one thing for 30 days and then stop it. Although it makes fantastically interesting videos <laughs> is I think for a lot of people, it can be, um, almost like a sort of, um, I don't want to equate it to like a, a purge, but it's, it's, it's almost like sort of a, a confessional thing. It's a, what do they call them? Indulgences in okay. Catholicism where it's like, I have this time where I'm very good. And then the rest of the time I can be bad if that yeah. makes sense. And sure. I think a lot of people have that relationship to it. To, to things like intermittent fasting? To, like, uh, or to do uh, to do cleanses or to do things for a oh. very specific window of time. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I definitely think that can that can also be a danger. For me, it's 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 the goal is to develop good habits, to take take that thirty days or a week or whatever I do and try to take something good forever afterwards. Like I'm I'm not my goal is not to just do it to be sensational, to be like, mm. look what I did. Uh, this is crazy. My goal, my goal, legitimately, is I'm trying to improve myself. The, the The first one I did was the no sugar, and it was really because I thought I was eating too much sugar. Yeah. And my wife thought she was eating too much sugar, so we decided to to do I, it. I fully eat too much sugar, and I feel very defensive around this topic. We were t for <laughs> full disclosure, we were talking about this earlier before we started. But like, I I definitely, it's like I know that it's like I have not a good relationship yeah. with sugar. Like I have like a whole, I have like four different bags of like fun size candy like <laughs> around my house <laughs> well yeah but you see i'm not like Dark. i'm not here to preach that you shouldn't do that that's just i'm just no but I'm just, i shouldn't <laughs> <laughs> but but my, my approach to these videos is just this is my experience this is what i think will improve me and like you can take from this whatever you want but i and i do understand that there are people out there making videos that are more like look how crazy this is and it's encouraging people to do things they probably should yeah that's, I mean, yours always seem reasonable for what it's worth. Well, well, thank you. Like, they yeah. seem usually like things that could be done for... Like, one of the ones mm -hmm. that really bothers me, and this is not what you do, but it is something that a lot of people who are in, for example, the fitness community do, is like cheat day videos, oh. which I find to be like very scary because they're... So these are people who uh, eat an incredibly regimented diet like six days a week, and then one day a week they will eat like 3,000 calories oh, of, God. you know, whatever yeah. food they want to. And it becomes almost like... Um, a demonstration of like how much willpower they can have. Yeah. Um, so obviously that's like a, you know, a pretty extreme version of it. But for yours, it feels like this really interesting balance between you have so much willpower over yourself clearly, but it never feels extreme or like out of control for you. And I'm wondering, is there ever, has there ever been one that you did where you felt like um, you could not have sustained it if you wanted to? Um, well... <laughs> The, the, there was a recent one that was going to bed at 7 p.m., which was um, 
that just like ruins your life though yeah <laughs> yeah that i because I, I i mentioned that i have such a problem with sleep and so i'm trying to figure out how to sleep better just have more what's out. your problem with sleep i wake up uh throughout the night i i uh in general especially since getting this uh this step tracking watch <laughs> um <laughs> uh that tracks my sleep i did that that was for a video a video about walking uh 10,000 steps a day but it also tracks my sleep and i'm noticing from that and also just from my own observation that i wake up throughout the night all the time and i i'm just perpetually low on sleep no matter no matter uh what i do so like i'm quitting alcohol right now for that's another for another video but part of the goal You're of that on it yeah <laughs> but part of the goal of that video is to improve my sleep to yeah. see if if the drinking is part of the problem so far it doesn't look like it's part of the problem but going to bed at 7 p.m. the goal was sort of to shift cuz i i always have a tendency to stay up later too mm. but not because i can't sleep just cuz i want to stay up uh, i don't know that's just bad bad habits but uh going to bed at 7 p.m. was a way to shift my sleep patterns to go to bed at a more reasonable hour, like maybe nine or okay, but seven p.m. is like crazy. <laughs> it is. No, I wasn't. My plan I wasn't. I did it at nine. <laughs> yeah, my plan wasn't to go to bed at seven p.m. forever, but just to shift it earlier. Um, but it didn't work at all. Like I, I, I went to bed at seven p.m. first five six nights. I did get a lot more sleep, but I was in bed. For, one night I was in bed for fourteen hours, and I got like nine hours of sleep. Nine hours of sleep was unheard is unheard of for me. That's a lot of sleep for me. But I had to be in bed for 14 hours to get it. Uh, oh my god! Yeah, you're like yeah. a toddler. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I hated I hated going to bed at 7 p.m. I hate because I, yeah. I I that's when we put our baby to bed and then I can't do anything. I just have to go right to bed. So I I quit. That's the only one that I quit. The only challenge. You stopped. I stopped. Yeah. I mean, okay, but yeah. 7 p.m. like that never would have worked. <laughs> like, who could do that? <laughs> no. Although I will say, going back to your early, similar to the small living space thing, 10,000 yeah. steps a day to New Yorker, you're like, baby, that's just called like picking up your laundry. <laughs> right, right. Since being here for the past couple of days, it last, yesterday I got 23,000 steps. Yeah. I actually did a challenge to do 20,000 steps a day every day for a month. And that was only difficult. Like, I can do it on aggregate, like, over the course of seven days, average out to 20,000. But there were several days that I was just, like, walking back and forth down my hallway to just, like, <laughs> hit the thing over the edge. Yeah. Um, I will say that the the steps thing is something everyone should do if they can. I did, it, is, I, it is a lot harder when you're not in New York. It, depend, it, depends, it also depends on your where you're from and what you do for a living. <laughs> I was, in a, fun anecdote, you used to yeah. live in Austin and I don't drive. I used to drive. I, I will not drive again mm -hmm. for the foreseeable future. <laughs> um, uh, but I was in Austin and so I would walk everywhere in Austin and yeah. like I was trying to get my 10,000 steps and like it is hazardous to pedestrians oh, in yeah. Austin. Like I did not realize. There Sidewalk were, situation, yeah. It was fucking terrifying and so many people were looking at me like i was a crazy person they're like why is that crazy lady walking <laughs> that's down the, the street? way that's the way a lot of america is is like it, it's not built for walking you but walk I did it. you feel weird when you walk places you know listen but then yeah. maybe that has a built-in lesson of like being less aware of what people think exactly you're just the crazy yeah lady walking. yeah that's actually one of the things i mentioned in the video was uh it one thing you have to get over is feeling like you're doing something you shouldn't be doing mm. because you should be doing it. We all walk. We're built to walk. But yet there are times when you're when I was walking around a neighborhood in Madison where where it's you like were calling the cops on like you. <laughs> there's no sidewalk and I'm, and I'm just walking on the street and I felt I felt weird. Like I felt like like I'm in a I'm just people are going to be look, wondering what I'm doing walking past their house like. But you shouldn't feel that way if you're to walk, you know? You know what you should do? You should strap those little pastel colored like ankle and wrist weights to yourself and then just go walk laps in the mall. <laughs> <laughs> mall walking <laughs> is actually, it, when it's really cold or really hot, my, uh, my wife, when she was pregnant, she needed to walk. We were in Austin. Mm. Way too hot. So we went to the mall and we, we walked around. I love mall walking. Yeah. There's a mall at Columbus Circle. I love it. This could make a great Wheezy Waiter video if we could figure out how to retrofit this into 30 days. But I have a thing where I take a lot of red eye flights. I prefer yeah. red eye, especially if I'm going to like Europe or something. And I mm -hmm. need to fall asleep on that plane. So I will walk 10,000 steps in that airport right before I get on the flight. Because then when you sit down on the plane, that chair, that shitty economy class chair <laughs> feels amazing. And you go right to sleep. Yeah. Well, that's a great idea. I have a problem 
problems sleeping on planes too. That's a good idea. It's a hot tip. That well, I mean, sometimes a unisom helps, but still, the the walking is like the biggest thing because it's not just the sleep. You feel grateful to be in that shitty chair. Wow, to feel grateful to be in an economy class chair. It's life changing. People tweet me now all the time. They're like, "I'm getting in my Chelsea steps pre flight." Uh, on the flip side, though, was there ever um, uh, so, some challenge that you did that became obsessive to you, or that you became like manic about? Um, none, none that, none that became obsessive, but one, but one that I like intermittent fasting, I still love and I still do a lot. Meditation, I think is fantastic. Uh, I always feel self-conscious when people talk about being into meditation because like I can't do it. <laughs> well, there's no right or wrong way to do it, really. That like, makes me feel worse. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean by you can't do it? So my husband is very into meditation. He like yeah. does his whole like meditative practice on a I think a daily basis and like I'm and he like has walked me through the process he's like you have your word that like you repeat and it like brings you into your meditative state and he like mm -hmm. whatever and I've tried a million different ways I've used apps I've done all this thing but I just think I have a loud brain so you just your problem is you feel like you can't turn your brain off you can't turn your random thoughts off no yeah I initially I did it every day for 30 days mm -hmm. uh and initially uh with the goal of 20 minutes each time and initially, it was hard to turn my brain off. I realized I was addicted to thinking about work. I was addicted to thinking about the things I had to get done all the time. And eventually, what I did was the body scan, where you, you focus on each part of your body, starting in the head all the way down. Mm. And that um, turned my brain off almost every time. It took a, it took a little while, but, but after like, I don't know, five or ten minutes of doing that, Fun fact, yeah. uh, when I was a teenager, I was Wiccan and in a coven, and we used to... <laughs> and then, fun fact, after that, was baptized as an evangelical Christian. Like, Chelsea was, like, doing the Epcot tour. <laughs> wow. Religions. Wow. Was this but by choice? Like, yeah, yeah, like, multiple years at a time, though, not, like, 30 days. But, yeah, no, yeah. I was very... My parents were very, like surprisingly woke and very permissive about me like they took me to like a little um oddity shop when i was wiccan to like get me a wand and an altar and all this stuff i had a coven there were three of us wow. anyway all that to say w there's a practice in wicca um and in a lot of pagan religions where you project to the astral plane where you can like it's basically meditation looking yeah. back and i'm like yeah. if only i had the zest that 13 14 year old chelsea had <laughs> because i was like i remember the feeling which yeah. i suppose is very equivalent to true meditation where you're in a meditative state and you are not at all encumbered by your daily internal monologue yeah i mean that the goal is really just to stop thinking about the my my anxieties my stress everything that is stressful in my life and it it's really nice when it works it doesn't work for me every time either but it, it does work do you have <laughs> tips for people who would love to challenge themselves to do something but don't feel capable of it set a time set a time limit just say I'm going to do it for this amount of time, mm. and and then and then I, for me that just works because then I know that oh, I don't have to do this forever. If initially you don't like it, most things that I try initially I'm I'm uncomfortable about with them, but because I know there's an end goal, I'm like okay I'll just continue. And then after several days, I start to like most of the things that I try. So yeah, I'm really interested because again I think I'm someone who would. Haven't ha, probably missed the point of a lot of 30 day challenges because I feel like I would just like, like if it was sugar, I feel like I would just like go out and get myself a sheet cake to celebrate. Like, I feel like <laughs> well, I'm yeah, not. but then after 30 days, we, my wife and I did that and we, we you didn't really want it as kinda, much. Yeah, we kind of didn't want it. I mean, okay, my, listen, my wife went back to eating a lot, a lot of sugar. She admits that she's like back to square one now. So it didn't really I feel validated stick. now. <laughs> yeah. To be fair, like yeah. okay, so in the case of sugar, that's a poor example for me because I'm definitely yeah. phys physiologically addicted to sugar. Like I probably could benefit from like a detox period. Say a week. Do, do a week. I could do a week. Yeah. But I do think in general, if it's something that like like the internet or some facet or social media, something that like is never going to leave your life, but you want to have a better relationship to. I'm curious if you've ever done because I feel like this would be a better one for me to do like a five two situation. I know a lot of people do this with like veganism. They'll be uh, like, uh, I'm vegan five days a week. Five days a week? Not necessarily on the weekend or weekday, yeah. just like any five days, any two days. I think that would work. But again, like, because for me, I think it would gradually bleed into just my normal habits I have now uh, after mm. a while. Like if I, I, I would rather, for me, I would feel more accomplished if I set a goal of like 30 days and did it for those 30 days rather than say infinitely, in, indefinitely. Five two because right. it feels just too overwhelming. The idea of something doing something indefinitely. 
Well, yeah, and just the fact that it's indefinite, me, just I don't know, it would just make me want to break the rules more. I'd just be like, yeah, this week I'm not going to do it. This week I'm not going to do it, you know? Have you ever done a 30-day challenge? Have I ever done a 30-day challenge? I have done... I'm, I've done two weeks of a challenge, or I've done... Um, I'm, I, this is my new regime. I am the guy who never eats sugar and works out for this amount of time, and then I spiral into like obsessive behavior that like gets bad. I was going to say for you, though, and for me, the thing that works, I think we have very similar relationships with, like, I don't want to say compulsive behavior, but, like, things that we want. We want things now and we get them. Mm. I think something that has helped me (laughs) is just throwing all my candy out but buying a whole bunch of dried fruit and things that aren't necessarily better but are better. And then switching from dried fruit to, like, canned fruit to, like, fresh fruit. And then I'm eating a lot of fruit and then i got to cut down fruit, which is pretty easy because I can replace it with, like, peanut butter on a rice cake or whatever and then at that point i'm like oh i'm not really eating a lot of sugar yeah so the gradual changes for you like for me just 30 days doing the extreme for 30 days helps me again it's hard it's hard to say how much it helps me because i still eat, eat sugar now but uh i doing it for 30 days really taught me a lot about what what's in what's in everything like this has sugar this has sugar this oh, yeah and eat garbage <laughs> yeah yeah and, it, and now i'm just more aware of it and i'm more aware when i'm eating too much and i can scale it back I, mm. but it's not like it's not i'm not quitting it all together you know i was talking about this actually with my colleague before we came here because i was uh mentioning that you know this is a lot of what you do is these challenges you did the sugar one and i was like i i want to just like a, as a first step toward anything like empty out my kitchen of and the other hiding places of all the sugar products that I have, like all the candy, the cookies, the cakes, the frozen dessert, like all of that stuff. Just like put it on my counter in a pile and take a picture of it. Like <laughs> yeah. I don't even have to do anything necessarily after that, but just like just acknowledge it because I feel like like it's interesting what you were saying, Ryan, that like a lot of times the 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 cold turkey slash cleanse element it's still about that thing. Like even if you're not necessarily, even if you're abstaining from it, the abstention becomes its own thing. But I do feel like if, if even if it's the, that approach that works, that's more like phasing out. I think first and foremost, I think we'd all be a lot healthier if we acknowledge that a lot of our habits are bad and a lot of what we take for granted is really not okay. Yeah. Um, like I think obviously New York, it's not necessarily our problem as much as others, but like I think a lot of people don't realize how sedentary they are. Oh, Yeah. Uh, I, video editing is a very sedentary thing. Like I, I have to, and I try, I bought a standing de- or a, a stand so I can stand, put my laptop on and, and stand up and edit. Even that, like standing for a while is sedentary. Like it's just, yeah, it's rough and working at home. So I, ha- I have to, I have to consciously be like, I'm going to go out and just take a walk for no reason mm. or which, which is just a weird concept for people to walk for no reason like i feel weird saying hey i'm gonna go take a walk like where are you going just just taking a walk like okay (laughs) but why does it have to why does that feel weird you know because i i think so many of our bad habits become um become social habits in the sense of like people will look at you weird in cities where walking is not a thing if you're walking a, because it's unusual and they're like, are they casing a house to rob it? <laughs> but also because I think they know that it's bad that they're not walking. Yeah. So you walking is like an indictment of them not walking. Yeah, which I also don't, I'm not trying to indict anyone else. I'm just like, I just want to walk. Yeah, you know? like I yeah. have not watched your sugar video because I feel defensive <laughs> about all the fucking sugar I eat. So, <laughs> well, but I know, yeah. but I know that. And I feel yeah. like that's already in and of itself a step in the right direction. Well, well, I, I, I don't, again, you can do whatever you want, you know? But listen, no matter how much money I'm spending on sugar, I got to have the right tools to keep track of that money. And one of the most inevitable things that you are going to have to do with your money, if you are a law-abiding citizen, is pay your taxes. Now, listen, it is no secret that taxes are often a little bit intimidating and it can be difficult to navigate them on your own. But if you have ever used TurboTax or even heard of it, you probably know that it is a really, really good piece of software to help get you through the process of navigating your taxes easily and clearly and to get you the biggest possible refund that you're entitled to. Basically, 
basically TurboTax walks you through the whole process, helps you with all of the various, you know, questions and prompts and things that you need to fill out. But now the makers of TurboTax also offer TurboTax Live, where in addition to all of that step-by-step -step software that walks you through the tax filing process, you have access to real verified experts, people like CFPs who are there to help you understand your taxes, who can answer questions for you in real time, and just generally give you that extra level of assurance that you are doing your taxes properly and that you are getting the most money that you are entitled to in your refund. If you are feeling a little bit intimidated about your taxes this year or want to make sure you're just doing it right, I highly recommend checking out TurboTax as a way to make your filing way easier and give you that peace of mind. You can learn more about TurboTax in the link at our description or our show notes. So speaking of money, have you ever done a challenge around finances? Um, not for a video, but I, I might do one for a video. My wife and I did a, uh, a no spend month. I don't even remember. It was, it was a little while ago. I don't and even you remember. didn't make a video? No, this was before I was doing the challenge videos. Mm. Uh, but man, I should have, right? You really should have. We'll do it yeah. again. I, yeah, I think we should. Um, uh, it's kind of disingenuous to like pick the right time to do it, but because we just moved, we bought a lot of stuff to, for our new house and everything. Oh, We're yeah. still kind of like transitioning that but once once that settles yeah then maybe just like a no spend month would be great um, what did you learn from your last no spend month we spend a lot of money on going out to eat <laughs> listen i feel like that's what most people would discover <laughs> yeah it's that but that's something we love to do and that um what else that was about it that's like the main the main expense for us is just going out to eat going out to eat um shopping like my, my wife does a lot of the, the buying of stuff i never i always hate shopping anyway but yeah that's pretty much it don't don't go out to eat but then but then what do we do but then why just die at that point <laughs> yeah <laughs> just kidding no but i do that that is one that i feel like is so i i think it's so easy for people to point to the going out to eat as a really frivolous way for people to spend money but i feel like at the end of the day, eating food is one of the few like pure human pleasures. And for so many people, I feel like that's one of the things that brings them the most joy in a given week. We Well, we are doing, we're in the middle of another, we're, I'm doing no alcohol, um, but we're also doing meal planning um, this month. Doubling up. Yeah. Are you making a video for both? Yes. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, but meal planning really affects my wife more than me because she does the cooking. Um, and... Um, you're canceled. I'm sorry. This it's not. I'm not making her shunting yeah. that domestic labor right uh, onto the wife. Yeah, she wants. Who's currently she, at home in Wisconsin, uh, frigid Wisconsin, taking care of his yeah. child. This was her idea for me to come to New York. I don't believe it. <laughs> All right. Well, well, you'll watch the video. You'll. But find I will out. say, yeah. doing no yeah. drinking and meal planning in a month. That's gonna. You're. It's gonna be hard to disentangle which benefits are from which, right? Body yeah. wise. <laughs> Yeah, what meal planning and no alcohol? Because I feel like yeah. if you lose weight, it's like from whence did that come? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's true. I, I I don't think like with meal planning, I don't know that we're we're changing our diet a whole lot. We're just we have less stress in our day because mm. that that is a big that was a big source of stress was what are we going to eat tonight? Uh, I don't know. What do you want? We'll just have a discussion, and it it does stress my wife out a little because we're she has to have time to prepare because we're we're also feeding our baby and everything and. I don't, I, I sound like just like a bad person, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> no, although I will yeah. say when, when you first said meal planning, I was envisioning meal prepping, which you're not doing. Not really, no. We're, some of it's prepped. Yeah, some of it. But but we would go to the grocery store like almost daily just to because we didn't know what we were going to eat until that day. And See, this uh, is why, like, this is more of that like broification of concepts though, because isn't a lot of like meal planning and meal prep, isn't that just leftovers? Uh... It is for me. I mean, I cook big bash almost everything I cook, and then I portion out and freeze like the rest of it. And I feel like my mom and did that, and it wasn't called meal like meal prep. And then it lasts like a week, or like no, you put it in the freezer, Craig. You, what do you mean? So you 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 cook a big portion, you put it in the freezer, <laughs> and then you heat it up every night, or you Not no. every night. <laughs> it's just like you now have it. It's like yeah, um, it snows, and you're like, remember when we made soup? Gonna Time eat to that eat, soup. Heat some soup up. Like, I'm literally gonna do that tonight. I'm gonna make like a shit ton of soup and then freeze like eight or, you know, maybe six portions of it. Okay. I mean, that, yeah, that works, but 
that's not the way my wife wants to eat. She doesn't like a lot of leftovers. <laughs> But yeah. again, yeah. you don't usually eat the leftovers. Like we'll have one portion of leftovers yeah. that's in the fridge that you eat like for lunch that week, but then the rest of them go in the freezer and you can eat them like months later. Yeah, I, yeah, I it's suppose. It's kind of like TV dinners, but for yourself. But we're also trying to not go out to eat a whole lot. We're mm. supposed we're so, you know, we, we 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 the the food we're cooking, we can put it away, but then we just have to keep cooking more food. Mm. You know, we we, we want to eat the leftovers right away. We're also at home all day. So, oh, she works at home too. Yeah. Oh, so, okay. so we're eating lunch at home. Mm. So we we do we do need a constant flow of of food to happen. Got it. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I feel like it used to be so much more common than it is now for people to be okay with the concept of eating the same meal multiple times in a week. I feel mm. like the the. I mean, again, I like I like. I'm very it. used to the leftover lunch life, yeah. but I understand if that's not your thing that it could feel kind yeah. of depressing. Again, I like I like that idea. Yeah. But my wife doesn't like that idea of eating the same meal. She loves like it a, to be fresh every time. Yeah. I'm like, ooh, what's for dinner tonight? <laughs> yeah, kind of. Every yeah. time's an adventure. <laughs> yeah. So how has uh, how has it been going with uh, Dry January? Um, not that hard, really. Uh, except coming to New York, it made it a little more challenging because there's so many awesome looking cocktail bars and wine bars everywhere. What are you um, doing instead for your outings? Um, I'm just working. <laughs> Pretty much. You should go like bowling or something. I should go bowling. Do like a fun We're, little activity. Okay. I mean, we well, like last night I went out and I had ramen, which was awesome. That's mm. that's just eating. That's not that's not an activity really. That's true. It's uh, really interesting. We, I was talking about this with a friend the other day. How we as adults often become incredibly unimaginative with our mm-hmm. social lives as mm-hmm. we get older. We're like, do you want to get a you know you want to go get some food? You want to go get a drink? You want to. I think that's it for the most part. I think I, as I get older, people. I just weigh how much energy it's going to take to go do the thing versus uh, not doing it. You know, uh, when I was younger, it's like I had infinite energy. I could just go out and do whatever. But as I get older, it's like, oh, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to go. Well, if you're not in New York, go get in the car and drive and, and then go uh, just hang out for a while. And then I get, go home and then like, it's going to be too late and I'm going to not get enough sleep. And <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I find that that's also part of the reason why I, because I do, um, I do pretty regular workout classes and I always do them in the evenings because mm-hmm. I find that like, especially in the winter months, it's one of the few things that will consistently like force me to be outside of the house, move my body and like experience some serotonin <laughs> after the hour of five o'clock. And because otherwise it's like, all you want to do is go home and sit on your couch and eat like stew. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But it doesn't help that there's so many awesome TV shows, and, you know. There's too much TV. I can't. No more, please. Like, I feel like there's, I don't know. I, I feel like there's way too much. Which, by the way, and I'm curious to know, when you did not watch TV or movies for mm-hmm. a month, uh, d- you you really didn't miss that. It didn't feel like an absence to you. Really? No, it really wasn't that hard. <clears throat> um, I'm trying to remember what we were in the middle of watching at the time, and I can't think of what we were. Oh, we were, we were watching a lot of Great British Baking Show at the time on, on Netflix. It's called the Great British Bake Off. Yes, but not in <laughs> not a, not in America. It's not. It's is that um, true? Yeah, never seen it. On, on Netflix, it's the Great British Baking Show. We were in the middle. You never seen it? No, I just like to condescend. Okay, well. <laughs> wow wow no no i really i really uh i I should watch it i love cooking shows so it's i like it because it's it's a breath of fresh air compared to any other competitive competitive show yeah because it's everyone's so nice to each other yeah Yeah. have you ever outside of the steps have you ever done a workout challenge um no i plan to do one this year Uh, i plan to do (sighs) don't say crossfit no, no, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. But some sort of strength training because I've never done it, and I want to, I want to try. I've never, I've never joined a gym. You know what I would like to request formally? Uh, I'm sure none of you will be surprised, but I never. There are no, there are very few men that do it, and it has an enormous amount of benefits. I would say do Pilates for a month. Pilates, it's so good for the body. Hank Green does Pilates. I know he does, yeah. and so a lot of people actually. Most men who do Pilates, this is anecdotal, but most men that I know that do Pilates or have done Pilates have gotten into it because a physical therapist or a doctor told them to. Because mm-hmm. it's very, very good for you know your joints, your muscles, all that stuff. It really helps like flexibility, posture, all those things. Um, but it's pretty difficult, especially when you get really into it. And I feel like a lot of men would be surprised at you know, how much it does for them. That is that is interesting. That sounds like a good video. Do you want credit for that? Listen, if you publish that bad boy, <laughs> it should be co-produced by Chelsea. Wow, wow. Okay. I want you EP want, status. Do you want to edit it for me? 
<laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, that actually sounds like a great idea, Pilates, because, yeah, you wouldn't, exp- you don't see a lot of dudes doing it. No, and um, I feel like it's also because um, I think anything that, like, is works on, like, flexibility or stretch, any of, any of that is just, like, red is girly, I feel. Yeah. And be. yoga, you were going to do yoga for a month at some point, too. Which yeah, I hope, which is good. I hope helps people say might help my sleep problems as well. So, Listen, I'm someone who's had sleep problems my whole life, and mm. I do Pilates pretty damn regularly, and it really hasn't helped. <laughs> um, yeah. But I also, like, oh, I know a challenge I should definitely do for 30 days. No blue screen in bed. Yeah. I, I, I did that with no internet, and it... Did it help your sleep? Maybe a little. Maybe a little. That's a no. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. I'm never going to get better sleep. I don't know. Like, I don't think that's my problem. Like, because I've, I've gone through periods of time where I'm reading my phone in bed and where I'm not, and I don't don't see that much difference. So out of all of the challenges you've done, you think that intermittent fasting has had the most lasting benefits. And for meditation. And meditation. Those yeah. two are the ones you would try. What is the one that, like, as soon as you did the 30 days, you're like, glad that's over, never again? <laughs> Uh, well, the, the week of going to bed at 7 p.m. for sure was definitely, uh, I'm glad that's over. Veganism, I didn't hate it, but I, it hasn't really had a lasting effect. Do you eat as much meat and animal products as you did before? I don't know. It's probably, I probably do. I mean, I didn't, I didn't eat a whole lot before it. I don't eat a whole lot now, but I do eat meat products. Mm. I'm, I'm more aware of it now, I guess. Like I'm more aware of the things that are vegan and the things that aren't and, I don't know. Sometimes I, I'm more, I'm more willing to just try a vegan option because a lot of them are very good. Um, but I don't, but I still eat meat. Uh, my approach mainly was to see how, how it would improve my health, like how I would feel after going, after having that vegan diet. Um, Did you feel better? Not really. I felt- oh my god, <laughs> Craig, you're like, like all of your ver- verdicts are like, man, yeah, it was pretty much the same. Yeah, except for some, like meditation and inter- intermittent fasting. But like, um, I don't know. I felt fine. I felt pretty good. But it was only a month. Maybe, maybe it would have. It would have taken a while. Yeah, maybe it would have taken longer. But once you get into like the ethical argument or the um, environmental arguments for veganism, it gets really uh, shaky. Like, it's, yeah. like it's hard to. Both sides have good points. Both sides, I don't necessarily agree with everything they're saying. So I don't know. Well, I think one of the things we talk about most on TFD when it comes to any kind of approach to how you budget, because ultimately, like outside of bare necessities, your budget is just going to be made up of things that you choose to have in your life. Um, Mm -hmm. I think a big thing that we like to talk about is really getting super clear about what is a need versus what is a want and what is, you know, actually bringing you joy and value and meaning versus what is just something you've become accustomed to or something that might be a passing desire or even just you saw an ad for something and now you want it. Um, Do you feel that doing these challenges really help you clarify your own instincts and desires and value? 100%. Yes. Like quitting the internet, for instance, uh, or which also involved quitting TV. Uh, we still had fun. We still, we still interacted with each other, uh, my wife and I, and we enjoyed life. And I realized that it, it was all of those things, all those other things around, almost none of it matters really. Mm. What matters is, I mean, to get sentimental, what matters are the people in your life. That's really mm. what matters, you know? And, uh, the more these, the more they do these challenges, the more I, like no alcohol. Every every uh, like a lot of my social interactions, especially in Wisconsin, involve drinking. Mm. Um, beer, I assume out there. Beer, a lot of beer, yeah. Uh, but with eliminating it, I'm still like even my even my family. Wait, my my parents drink, my sister drinks. Um, they're quitting along. They're quitting along with us, which is pretty interesting. But. Uh, we're still getting together. We're still having meals together. We're still having a good time. Like those, those, those things around us really don't matter that much. So you feel like those challenges just help you get a clearer sense of what is really valuable in each given yeah, and situation. Yeah. And almost every time what's just valuable is the people in your life. That's really it. Yeah. And I also think, you know, similarly to clarifying, you know, the need versus one, I think it's also really important to just feel a huge sense of gratitude, but also enjoyment with whatever it is that you're doing. And I feel like, you know, if something is a rare and exceptional treat, it is like every moment of that is savored and you anticipate it and you think about it and it's it's of real value to you. But if it's something that's done carelessly and frequently, it just becomes, uh, 
it just gets like absorbed into the dust of your life. Yeah. I mean, to maybe like to make a comparison, like watching a, watching a movie that I've been waiting all year to come out. Like I want to see this movie and it's so good versus, uh, Oh, another episode, another episode of the great British baking show. Like, yeah, yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I had that yeah. definitely. I had uh, one specific kind of uh, place that I had, uh, I I never got takeout from because I thought their charges were ridiculous for, for delivery or delivery, I guess. And I so I got it for a birthday. And it was like, mm. I had like a special bottle of champagne that I was chilling that we had with the delivery. And we like, you know, we set up this whole setup and like we watched a really great movie while we were having this takeout and everything. And it was like the most fabulous experience. And it felt so exciting to get this really indulgent thing. And then I get like, got it a few more times throughout the year and then I was like wow you really just like man you killed it you killed that thing that was so exciting to you and now it's it's worthless to you and the it's nothing it's a it's a you know not even a shadow of what it was to you that night yeah and it has nothing to do with what it is it's just how you it's just your relationship to it in your life so as a as a last question on these uh videos what would be you're aside from setting the time limit, like let's say you're someone who doesn't necessarily want to limit their challenge to a 30 day, but if there's someone who wants to get a lot of control over a habit or a routine or whatever, what is your advice? Well, uh, don't be afraid to try things, I guess, or to, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, you're, you're eliminating my main things, which are, which are our time limit. Um, I'm, I, have to, I have to think about this. Have a huge uh, YouTube audience, which holds you accountable to your goals. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Would you say that it's uh, more effective to focus really strongly on your goal or to not think about it when doing it? Um, I think it's, I think it's best to not think about it, but it's hard to not think about it depending on the goal. But, uh, yeah, I would say it, it's best to figure out a way to just live your normal life without without thinking about the thing all the time. Like quitting uh, alcohol it'd be, and your friends want to go out for to a bar. Like, I I think there's nothing wrong with, you know, getting getting a drink that looks like a cocktail, like getting a, a, a soda or with a lime in it or something. And uh and just pretending like you're still doing it, mm-hmm. and and that'll keep your mind off it. And I think that's that's perfectly legitimate. Why not? Um, or like I, I I'm drinking non-alcoholic beer, and I'm kind of like some of it. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, and it uh, anything anything to keep your mind off of thinking about have wanting to to have a drink or to have sugar or whatever. Find an alternative. Trick yeah. yourself. I I have no problem with tricking yourself. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like in the times that I've uh, started things from scratch that were very difficult for me at first, um, I guess IF was part of it, although I never really ate breakfast. So I was like inadvertently doing IF kind of. Yeah. Um, but especially for me, starting Pilates a few years ago was the hardest thing I ever did in terms of like completely changing my relationship to like my body and like getting into working out and all that stuff. I think the thing that really helped me <clears throat> at first was to. Um, well, A, dedicate a, uh, and pr- this is, I think, particularly true if you're starting something, really clear your schedule and like focus on doing that thing in terms mm-hmm. of like, you know, I, I did several days in a row where I like worked with a, you know, a, a, um, a coach to like help me learn the basics, all that stuff. I didn't, I had no social plans during that time. It was very much like I want to give myself this time to really focus on the thing um, and not feel like I have to shoehorn it into a day. Similarly, if I was going to do like, you know, uh, I want to wake up at 5 a.m. every day, I would, I think it would be very helpful to me to like, I am having no social plans that week because I don't want to come in, you know, at 11 o'clock at night after a dinner and then still have to get up at five. I want to give myself every possible advantage to helping that be the case. Um, And then the other thing I found that really helped me in making those changes was giving yourself, and this is harder, I guess, at a 30 day challenge, but in general, like giving yourself permission, like to do what you want. And if it's really that important to you, you can do it. You know, Mm -hmm. like if it's really that important to you to not go to class, you can not go to class. If it's really that important to you to have a breakfast, even though you don't normally eat breakfast, you really want that croissant because you're in France, whatever, have the croissant, you know? Mm -hmm. And then once you have that permission, I feel like it becomes less of like a, an overwhelming monologue. You yeah, know? I think, yeah, I, you can, yeah, cheat here and there and don't feel bad about it. I think feeling bad is actually very detrimental because then you'll, that'll, you'll just spiral downward. You'll start, it'll, it'll cycle into just everything makes you feel bad. So then you're just going to completely avoid 
whatever it is you're trying to do. You're going to, you're going to give up. <laughs> That's why, uh, I mean, listen, it's the, we call it the financial diet because the only diet that actually works is something you can do every day. Yeah. You know, I, th- I thought of another thing to say oh, to answer that question. Share like it. try to, I try to think about, um, like I, I have, I have weight loss goals. I ha- like, I have, uh, exercise goals and i try to think about the type of person that i want to be i I mean i don't know i don't know if this is healthy or not this is just what i do uh i try to think about uh do i want to be the type of person who um who exercises every morning do i want to be the type of person who can exercise and it doesn't hurt (laughs) you know do i want to be the type of person who 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 doesn't uh over Hard to, hard to talk about this stuff. Um, don't want to be the type of person who who doesn't want who who wants to be have a healthy relationship with food. Who doesn't feel like they've they've overeaten or you know when I look at myself in the mirror, do I want to do I want to be happy with what I see? Do I want to and and again, it's not really about appearance for me. It's not really about um, uh, sort of an external thing for me. It's about just feeling good about about feeling healthy, feeling like I have energy. Um, and I don't know. I just try to, I try to constantly picture what that doesn't sound, sound healthy as I'm saying it out loud. No, I think but, it's healthy totally guys yeah, because I think it's yeah. much more, I mean, I, I would put it a different way, but for me it's about, I want to feel like I'm steering the ship, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like I want to feel like I'm in charge of the decisions that I'm making that, you know, if I, if I like, you know, I, I got Chick-fil-A yesterday, which aside from being problematic is also yeah. not like the best food in the world for you. But yeah. I can enjoy that for what it is and not feel that that has somehow derailed me because I made that choice consciously and I'll make different choices tomorrow that will help keep me on a general good path. And I feel like it's an overall sense of like, I think we've all been in places, whether it's you're looking in the mirror, just moving down the street and walking and you can feel that you're not the way you want to feel. Right. And that to me is another way of saying like, I'm not steering the ship. I'm not making the decisions and setting the terms. I'm letting them be set by, you know, whether it's cravings or, you know, addictions or whatever it may be, like something else is steering the ship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The way you said it was, was good. (laughs) Thank you. Um, So before we let you go, we have our rapid fire questions. Okay. That we ask all people who cross these hallowed halls. Uh, number one is what is the big financial secret of your industry? And uh, we'll just make this YouTube. The big financial secret of my... Well, you're a YouTuber. Can you answer that? Uh, I have a lot of answers to that, but I'd be curious to hear yours. Big secret. Oh, I have a really good one that will make you reveal a number, uh, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, <laughs> how much money did you make off of that video that did 10 million views? Do you know? Uh Somewhere in the thirty thousands. Holy shit! <laughs> yeah. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> that is a That's lot a of money. Yeah. That's a car. Yeah. That's a car. <laughs> yeah. That was a. It was very. And that doesn't happen every video. In fact, by far, it never happens for me. That's but, exciting. Well, yeah. thank you for revealing that number. We love when someone reveals a number for <laughs> for context. Yeah. Uh, number two. What do you invest in versus what are you cheap about? Uh, I invest in stocks. I. Uh, and I'm cheap about clothes. Damn, just like a straightforward answer. Out of yeah. curiosity, when you say stocks, I hope you're not meaning individual stock picking. I, I'm not like a day trader, if that's what you mean. Mm. Uh, <laughs> like mutual funds. Like, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. yeah. But I'm, I'm, I was just, in my mind, I was picturing you being like, I'll take a little Adidas, <laughs> a little Google, you know, what have you. Which... Yeah. Not good to do, folks. Uh, what has been your single best investment and why? Um, my investment in YouTube video making. There you go. Mm-hmm. What's like your tool that you get the most use out of? I mean, aside from, I guess it's your camera, but uh, actually that's a stupid question. Editing editing software. What, what do you use? Adobe Premiere. What has been your biggest money mistake and why? I, I, don't, I don't want to go into too much detail, but I invested in, in making an app and... I lost a lot of money. Was it you making the app? COVID, co-producing it, yeah. Got it. Mm-hmm. That sounds like a fraud story, <laughs> but we won't make you elaborate. Um, what is your biggest current money insecurity? My biggest money insecurity, 
I guess I, we just bought a house, so I think about that all the time. Um, the, put the money we're putting into that. What if like a tree falls on the roof? Yeah, we had to cut. We just had to cut a tree down. <laughs> man, trees and houses, man. Yeah, trees and houses. But it's I don't feel that insecure about it. That's just right. it's just like is, a worry. Yeah, right. Actually, uh, going back to the investment thing, you don't have to tell us anything about the app. But like, what is the biggest lesson that you learned from your foibles in app making? Don't go into anything you don't know that much about. Well, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> can't, can't say I disagree with that. Yeah. Number six, what has been the financial habit that has helped you the most? Putting money where I can't easily get it, <laughs> I guess. Man, your answers are short and sweet, but very true. Uh, well, I mean, I could elaborate on that if you want. Well, go ahead. Yeah. Like my, the best advice my dad gave me once when I was waiting tables and I was living month to month, I had no savings, was just every shift put put away $20. And so I just put it away. I put away twenty dollars into savings for periodically, and then eventually I would put in away more money than that because I noticed that I could afford to put away more money than that. And then I saved up like a couple thousand dollars, bought a laptop, started making videos. The American dream over here. <laughs> uh, and lastly, when did you first feel successful, quote unquote, and what does that word mean to you? I fr I first felt successful when I was able to do. To be my own boss, to be to I quit my job to do YouTube full time, um, and being successful to me means doing what you love for a living. Damn, <laughs> man, concise but powerful. Uh, so thank you so much for coming by and for doing all these uh, fascinating and comical and enlightening challenges. Well, thank you for having me. And if people want more of all of this, where can they go? <laughs> They can go to youtube.com slash wheezy waiter. That's my main stuff. I, I'm also on Twitter, although we've as we've discussed, Twitter doesn't matter, but I'm at Wheezy Waiter on Twitter. I should quit Twitter for 30 days. That <laughs> I could do and should. But that's hard if you're just quitting t Twitter, but you're still on the rest of the internet. It might eventually get led to Twitter somehow. Delete the app. Delete yes, the app. I will delete sure. the app. You know what? I'm going to wait. Delete it right Hold now. Hold on. Yeah. Oh my God. This is a TFD first. At least you'll have an obstacle to you get gotta to it. You got to cut in on this. Um, okay. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah. All right. We're going to the Twitter. Uh, ooh, they're all vibrating. <laughs> and delete. You did it. I did it. So next time you go to Twitter, you're going to be like, oh, I deleted the app. And you probably won't go to Twitter. Oh my God. Yeah. Is I've this, done this before with Twitter. So Is this like how like. <laughs> monks feel <laughs> um well anyway guys this has been a transformative experience for me <laughs> i got so much out of this yeah. uh thank you as always for watching and we will see you next week on the financial confessions i probably won't be here bye but, yeah. <laughs> And from the makers of TurboTax, there is a new free app called Turbo, which will help give you an even better and more enhanced understanding of your financial life. When it comes to making bigger and more impactful financial decisions, there are key numbers that are going to be really important to you. Things like your debt to income ratio, your net worth, your verified income, which is something uh, that lenders will use when they're deciding the terms of a loan you might be applying for, um, as well as your credit score, which I know you guys know is an extremely important thing to be keeping track of and always working to improve. Turbo basically offers you all of this information in one cohesive place so that you can really understand the nuances of your financial health and get a better idea of where you can be working to improve it, especially as you go into those big decision-making periods. Obviously, in this episode, we talked a lot about buying a home, and that is definitely one of those times where you are going to need a very intimate and detailed knowledge of your own financial life. So if you have been wanting to learn more about your own finances and maybe start making some of those bigger decisions, please check out Turbo at the link in our description or the show notes. It's free. Mm -hmm.